thank you for having me here. The violations of human rights that we've heard about throughout the world ought to shock the conscience of Americans. But as Congresswoman Maloney put it, we also need to be very careful about looking at what is happening in America. So much of what has been said about nations throughout the globe is starting to become the history of the United States as well. You may remember the religious right. Well, it did not die with the Reverend Jerry Falwell. It did not die when Barack Obama was elected the president. A lot of the pundits on cable television and in the New York Times said it had, but the religious right itself knew otherwise. And we are already starting to reap the whirlwind of their activity. Last year, the top 10 religious, political, religious right organizations took in three quarters of a billion dollars. I don't know about Ellie, but I'm having a little trouble with that level of contribution over at Americans United. <laughs> the right wing of American religion is already corroding almost all of the major institutions of American life. I want to mention just a few. The courts. In my view, the worst single electoral defeat in 2010 was the successful campaign to unseat three justices of the Iowa Supreme Court up for retention. The only issue in that election was that these three jurists had written an opinion that noted that same-sex marriage was constitutionally protected in the state and that to do otherwise would be to allow religious principles to dictate state law. Well, the religious groups aforementioned took their revenge. By putting an estimated $800,000 of out-of-state money, including $125,000 from one Newt Gingrich, into vitriolic ads, all three of those justices were defeated. And my question is, how can you maintain anything like an independent judiciary if it is subject to the punishment of religious majority, state or federal? Our military, we have a defense department that actually promoted, instead of dishonorably discharging, one Lieutenant General William G. Jerry Boykin, who went around to Christian churches in uniform recalling how he captured an Islamic warlord in Somalia, because according to the general, I knew that my God was bigger than his. I knew that my God was a real God and his was an idol. It's also just come to light that the United States Army today is still assessing soldiers on something called spiritual fitness. The clear message being, if you're not right with God, you're not right for the Army. Need I mention our health care system? Not only do we have those persistent, pernicious constants like the Hyde Amendment, but worse, in support of what I think was a very modest health care reform, Congress restricted reproductive rights for women even more. And now the debate is getting uglier and more personal and more local. Right here in the Washington, D.C. suburbs of Montgomery County, a recent flap over the construction of a new hospital left a lot of us seething after state hospital regulators granted a Catholic group the right to build a new facility, the first new hospital in 30 years, bypassing a plan by an alternative provider and knowing that the Catholic group would not provide any services barred by papal doctrine. Commissioner of Hospitals, the chair, Marilyn Moon, said, well, women can just go elsewhere for reproductive services. Just two days ago, a judge in Illinois ruled that pharmacists could not be required to dispense emergency contraceptions if it violated their conscience. Well, here's what violates my conscience. The idea that some licensed provider refuses service to women, telling them literally to go somewhere else to get it, and metaphorically to go to hell at the same time. services by the federal government, both President George Bush and President Barack Obama have doled out hundreds of millions of dollars to groups like World Vision, a group which officially pronounces 
that it will only hire Trinitarian Christians. In case any Unitarians in the room, you're not welcome either. <laughs> Even in those countries where it does a lot of work, where there are predominant Muslim or Hindu majorities. One official told a woman from the Global Post, we're very clear from the beginning about hiring only Christians. It's not a surprise, so it's not discrimination. Wait a second, let's change that sentence a little bit. Ms. Parks, we told you when you bought the bus ticket, you have to sit at the back of the bus, so it's not discrimination. My question is, how can a constitutional law professor, now President of the United States, not see that similarity and not stopping sending hundreds of millions of dollars to the cycle in history, 2012, is taking place. I mean, some of these candidates on the Republican side are breathtakingly honest, have to give credit for that. Mike Huckabee, he said, some of my opponents do not want to change the Constitution, but I believe it's a lot easier to change the Constitution than it would be to change the word of the living God. And that's what we need to do, is amend the Constitution so it's in God's standards rather than try to change God's standards. And then there's Michelle Bachman. Come on. She says she was assigned by God to serve in public office. She said, quoting her, I've been assigned to fight for freedom that Christ offers, even when there's a persecution that is involved. I guess Congresswoman Bachman feels a hair's breadth away from stoning every day of her life. The aforementioned new Gingrich noted two weeks ago that unless we return to our alleged Christian roots in America, his two granddaughters, by the time they are 60, will be in a, quote, secular atheist country, potentially one dominated by radical Islamists. Wait a minute, what does that mean? He was asked to explain in his press guide, you know, he said, uh, uh, Mr. Gingrich meant to say atheists or Islam. <laughs> so, you know, six of one, half of a dozen of the other. That's a Newtonian view. This week, I couldn't believe it. I thought I was reading The Onion. The former Chief Justice of the Alabama Supreme Court, Roy Moore, said he's probably running for president. I know him quite well. He's the guy who put a 5,000-pound granite shrine to the Ten Commandments right in the middle of the Judicial Center in Montgomery, Alabama. Americans United represented a very courageous woman attorney down there named Melinda Maddox, who wanted it out. She won the case, but she also lost every one of her clients and had every window in her house blown out by gunshots one horrific night. When this character refused to remove, under court order, his monument, we got him thrown off the Alabama Supreme Court by a unanimous vote of the other eight Republicans on the court at the time. Now, let me, let me now on the rubber chicken circuit. So I understand why he aspires to something greater, but maybe just another show on Fox. Glenn Beck's leaving would be enough. In Iowa, by the way, where the uh, rubber, different kind of rubber, hits the electoral road, we're seeing what one moderate Republican has called Camp Christian. Candidates expected to appear before what are essentially modern day inquisitors and tell them about their positions and all their personal faith as well at church sponsored gatherings almost every weekend. Well, you know, you hear this stuff and some people might say, well, that's bad. But the theocrats in America, they're not as bad as the people in some other countries. They're not killing people. That's called whistling past the graveyard. We know, we all know, many of us know, women who in the 1940s died in America because of the inaccessibility of abortion, good maternal health care, and if the house gets its way, we will see new generations of women who will die because Planned Parenthood was defunded and had to reduce cancer screenings, preventive services, and other similar aids to women. 
You know that when America decides to intervene with bombs, even if it claims to be doing so to preserve human rights, it is a failure of diplomacy because women, children, and men die. And it usually comes to that because politicians refuse to take notice of abuses, particularly those against women, that have been going on for decades. And groups like the Feminist Majority Foundation have pleaded with them to take notice of before. I learned a lot about the Taliban in 2000 at the Feminist Expo over in Baltimore. It took 9-11 to make most people, including then President Bush, even know what the group was. Speaker of the House John Boehner started Congress this year by reading the United States Constitution. He seemed to want to make this a kind of magical elucidation to C-SPAN viewers about the real meaning of the founding document as interpreted by Tea Party revisionists and religious extremists. You know, Boehner's interesting because he gets choked up so much of the time <laughs> that he cries. No, 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 wait, wait. It's okay for men to cry. This is the 21st century. But when we do it, we better be damn sure we are crying about the right things. <laughs> John Boehner's cuts to Planned Parenthood. We should weep over John Boehner's cuts to public broadcasting. Why? Because they dare to do innovative things like put on pro-evolution programs, <laughs> or some of you remember allowing that great Native American songwriter Buffy St. Marie to breastfeed on Sesame Street. <laughs> we ought to sob over the fact that John Boehner wants to force this city of Washington, D.C. to accept vouchers uh, for private schools, most of which teach that almost every form of birth control is the equivalent of murder, and most of which are not required to comply with Title IX. He wants those to displace the public school system here and around the world. Around the world, we have our work certainly cut out for us. There's another songwriter I know, uh, not by the St. Marie, who has said the first duty of a revolutionary is to get away with it. <laughs> we here may be a little bit more revolutionarily inclined than some people, but I like to think that we're seeing some very important signs all over this country. When 100,000 people, most of them not members of unions, marched in Madison, Wisconsin to defend and protect the rights of workers, most of us thought that was great, but some people said, well, it's just another march. Well, I'd say it's part of a revolution. On Tuesday, 740,090 Wisconsin voters marched to their polling places and elected to the Supreme Court of the state, Joanne Kloppenberg, <laughs> who will displace the current justice, a man who in a past life also covered up clergy sex abuse in the state. That's a part of the revolution as well. When we speak up for the rights of anyone, anywhere, and anywhere, we are breaking the silence. And some days, you know, speaking is itself a revolutionary act. We are not going to be turning our country back to the bigots. We're not going to turn it back to the fundamentalists. We're not going to turn it back to the Tea Partiers. We're not going to turn it back to the birthers without the biggest fight of their lives. <laughs> we will, like those brave women we've heard about, the non-victims, the brave, courageous women in Iran and Afghanistan, we are not about to give up because our revolution like Dr. King once described, his revolution is a revolution that has no exit strategy. Thanks so much for having me.